Well, folks, it, we're going into winter. Uh, at least those of us in the Northern Hemisphere are going into winter. And that means it's time to start thinking about micro quads. I first started thinking about micro quads uh, almost more than a month ago even, uh, when I showed up at the local flight field to fly and we had just enough time to get set up and the skies opened up, it just started raining. And one of the guys said, hey, I've got one of these uh, Iashin QX90s from Banggood back at my house. Why don't we just go over to my house and fly it? And in fact, a bunch of the people from the local flight club all bought the same copter all at once. Uh, and we spent the afternoon flying over at his house uh, and <laughs> just had a fantastic time. In fact, uh, at, at first, the QX90 didn't fly that great. Uh, I thought, well, what do you want? It's a, it's a micro brushed copter with two inch props. You're flying indoors. What, what could you really ask of this situation that you're not getting? But then I thought, well, it's got clean flight on it. I, why wouldn't I try to tune it? And in fact, I did tune it. And with just a few changes to the PIDs, I actually got it flying pretty well. Now, if you're saying to yourself, why are we looking at the QX90 and not any of the other excellent brushed copters that are on the market now? Uh, it, it, most notably the Tiny Whoop, right? Well, the simple answer is that the QX90 is what all the guys from the local flight club decided to buy, and so that's what I ended up flying this one rainy afternoon at this guy's house. Uh, and the other end, why'd they buy that one? Well, uh, number one, it's cheap, and number two, it does bind natively with the Tyrannus. It's, it supports FreeSky protocol, which means you don't have to deal with a DSM, an orange module, like you would have to do if you were to try to use the Tiny Whoop with a Tyrannus. Anyway, today that's the one we're going to look at, and I'm sure over the course of the winter I will have more microcopters to show you because I'm, I'm fascinated with the idea that I can fly around my house, and you used to have to give up a lot if you had them. Uh, the micros, they, they didn't fly spectacularly but many of them fly really well now. So hopefully over the course of the winter, you'll see more, but for now, this is the one we're gonna look at. Let's get into it. Here's the packaging that the QX90 comes in, and I'll be the first to admit, it is not <laughs> very impressive. Uh, it is just plastic, and if you pull the QX90 out, you got some instructions, and you got all the pieces here. So don't buy it for the packaging. I guess is the moral of the story. Here we've got the copter. The copter comes with two batteries and I, you should definitely buy some more batteries and don't buy the cheapest, cheapest ones either uh, because this guy who I flew with, he bought the cheapest, you know, $2 a piece, whatever batteries uh, and they, they do not last very long. And then here we've got the FPV module all in one and um, and it sticks on here and basically the way i've seen it done so this is for your battery that's little rubber strap here is for your battery it comes with another rubber band here and what i've seen people do is there we go i got it i got it i finally got it so that's what i've seen people do is just pass that over there um, i have practiced with this a little bit and the problem with that is that when, when you crash, it just flips over like that. So I know that there's a better way to do this. Joshua from the future here, and I'm gonna show you the much better way to do it. Place the video transmitter slash camera module on the top of the frame, just like it's going to be. Then take your rubber band and pass the rubber band around the back to landing legs like so. Pass it over the top of the module to one side of the antenna, because the antenna is off center, so if you pass it over the top of the antenna, it won't be centered. Pass it over the module and then give it a half a twist, like so. Half a twist, and then pull down, leaving the twisted part over the top of the lens and pass it over the front to landing legs, like so. Oh, I caught it on the battery connector a little. There we go, perfect. And then what that's gonna do is number one, it's gonna hold it much more snugly. Oh, and then give it a little bit of an adjustment so that front to back, so the tension is right. All right perfect. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna hold it much more snugly so there's not any vibration coming through the camera. And then number two, as you see me demonstrating here, it does a much better job of keeping it from tipping backwards in a crash. So I yeah, just give it a little shuffle so the tension, oh, perfect. And that little half twist there keeps it from flipping back quite as easily. Uh, and then when it flips over like that, this antenna gets into the props, and this antenna is just the cheapest stamped metal you could possibly find. So it gets bent up and dinged up, and you can bend it back, but it's not optimal. So, um, yeah, so 
I know there's a better way to do that. But for now, that's what I'm going to go with. I've even seen some 3D printed parts for it. And we got some spare motors here. They come conveniently magnetized onto the existing motors. So that's fine. And there you go. There you have it. That's all there is to it. Um, it is ready to power up and fly. Well, not quite. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to check is that your motors are square. So you can see here. That one was not quite square. They get, they get banged up and they get out of uh, true, if you will. So let's just get those square. And there you go. Now we'll go into clean flight and we'll get this set up. Now a nice thing about the QX90 is that it does power the receiver from USB. So in order to perform binding and test out your channels and stuff, you do not need to do any fiddliness with the batteries. So I will power up my Tyrannus and I've already got a model set up for this. And then I'll go ahead and I will put the Tyrannus into binding mode. The, the model needs to be in D8. This is, this is not an X series receiver, it's D8. And so we've got D8 with eight channels. And we'll put it in bind mode. It's, it's ready to bind. We'll go ahead and hold down this here button. And plug in the USB. And that should be it. If I then take it out of bind mode and plug it in, we should get a green light. Yep. Looks like we're bound. So let's go on to the next step and see what we can see in clean flight. We can see here that uh, COM3 is active. That's uh, what my COM port normally is when I've got, so the drivers are all good. Everything is good to go here. I'll connect. Mm, no dice, no dice. Why was there no dice? Oh, there we go. I don't know why that didn't work the first time, but it worked the second time. So if I go to the receiver tab, I should see my sticks moving. Fantastic, and I do. And let's see if my sticks are, my uh, channels are correct. No, they're not. They never are. So that is not pitch. And it's my mapping. I believe my default mapping is R-E-T-A. That's what I use for all my models. So let's go ahead and change that. I skipped over this a little bit while I was doing the original recording. So let me take a minute now and elaborate just a little bit. What does the channel mapping do? I told you my channel mapping is R-E-T-A, but what does that really mean? There are four main controls for a quadcopter or a plane, usually, or many different types of aircraft, and they are throttle, rudder, elevator, and aileron. Or another way to think about them is throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll, the, the three axes plus throttle. Those control inputs are going to come in to the flight controller on channels coming from your receiver. So you may have a six channel receiver and channels one, two, three, and four may be rudder, elevator, throttle, and aileron. But there are different standard ways of doing this. Some controllers use R-E-T-A, some use T-A-E-R. It's the order in which they come in on channels one, two, three, and four, you see? And so the channel mapping tells CleanFlight what order those controls are being sent from the receiver to the flight controller. And in fact, there are different standard ways of doing it. It used to be that you would buy a transmitter and the transmitter would come pre-programmed with uh, throttle on channel one and aileron on channel two or whatever. And the receiver would have those letters marked on it to tell you when you hooked up the servos for your airplane, which servo went to which channel. And it was all standardized. But these days with programmable transmitters like the, like the DX6, all the spectrum transmitters, the Tyrannus, etc. We can put any control we want on any channel we want, and these standards, it just, why, why do I do mine RETA? I don't know. Once a long, long time ago, I set my Tyrannus up as RETA, and I've set every model up the same ever since. All that matters is that when you move the correct stick, the correct channel moves in the configurator. So if you move the throttle and the throttle moves, everything is working correctly. 
And if you move the throttle and the yaw channel moves, then you need to redo your channel mapping so that the correct thing moves. So just look at what moves when you move what control and modify the channel mapping to move everything into the right position. And after we save that, how are we doing? Throttle, good, yaw, good, pitch, good, roll, good. Let's check our endpoints. 998 to 2000, 2000 to the 1000, 1000 to 2000, and 2000 to 1000. I like it, it seems good. Let's check out our modes. I like to switch arm. The copter has come with arm on um, aux one. And I'm gonna go ahead, it's also set up for angle on aux one. And it's set up so that you can actually have uh, a three position switch with angle and arm. I am actually gonna get rid of the angle mode because I don't like to fly an auto level, even these small copters. And for arming, I want the away position to be armed and the toward position to be disarmed. That's the opposite of what it is now. So I'm gonna just move this range down. Now I normally do a uh, sticky arming where I have to both flip this switch, flip the switch and pull this switch in order to arm. And on my bigger copters, that's a very important safety measure. But uh, on this little tiny copter, I'm not as worried about it and I won't, I haven't bothered to set up the sticky arming. Maybe I would if I, uh, you know, if I fly this for a long time. For now, that's fine. And let's see, fail safe, no, even on a small copter, makes sense to do fail safe. Let's do drop, not land. Okay, and I think we are ready to fly. I do think we are. All right, let's do it. 